This is not a political talk show, comma, but... Red wave rising. Said the red wave is coming. Sleepy Joe just guaranteed a red wave in Pennsylvania. We think we're going to have a big red wave in Michigan. Wow. Democrats are bracing for the worst case scenario, a red tsunami. We are officially on a red tsunami watch. Sean, we're going to see a red tsunami. Red tsunami grows. And lastly, your prediction for tonight. I think we're going to have a red wave. I think it's going to be maybe bigger than anyone thought. So what happened to that big red wave? We barely had a ripple. This is going to sound like a political commentary, but it is not. This is a Christian commentary to try to discern (laughs) what happened to the big red wave. There's got to be something going on here because since the 1930s, when we started polling about the performance of presidents, every single time a president's approval rating is less than 50%, The other party makes huge gains in the House and the Senate every single time. Except this time, you got to ask why. When three quarters of voters claim the economy is their chief concern, then they should have overwhelmingly voted for the red guys, but they didn't. And that means there have to be other issues that supersede even their dwindling checking accounts. I would make the case at least Five other issues controlled the results of the non-red wave election. (laughs) Number one, S-E-X. While I think the D party, unfortunately, will soon be joined by the R party, currently the D party is the party of free love. Most Americans, they've been persuaded courtesy of abysmal thinkers, Rousseau, Nietzsche, and Freud, that personal sexual expression is our most cherished right. And with the overturning of Roe and the talk of overturning Obergefell, people didn't vote their pocketbooks. They voted with their bedrooms in mind. And that leads us to number two, abortion. Thank you second and third wave feminist movements, the majority of Americans have now been persuaded that the right to intentionally take the life of an innocent human being is a reproductive health issue. (laughs) People just don't want to desist from the procreative act that has a procreative consequence. Number three, and this one's a wee bit ironic, but I think many people were persuaded by those who appear to really dig socialism, that democracy is under threat. Isn't that what the 6th day of January was all about? Once again, when people believe their libertine lifestyles are under assault, they will vote for the party that endorses, protects, and defends their right to pate. Thank you. Number four, the dependency class. It's at a tipping point when almost half the nation receives assistance from the government They're bound to vote for the party that just keeps the gravy train rolling. And finally, number five, for better and often for worse, the R Party is rather closely associated with Christianity. And the reality is, by any measurement, we're not a Christian nation. People voted against their financial interests to vote against our religious interests. So what do we do with this? It seems to me that if we want people to vote for righteous candidates, then we need righteous people. I can do that math. And the only way people are made righteous is through faith in Jesus Christ. So if you want to see a red wave at the next election, then we need to apply our efforts to making a, get ready for it, crimson tide. And I'm not talking about the football kind. Those are my musings. Please tell us below why you think Tuesday night was, well, let's just say a bit of a bummer. Detective Friel, can you tell us what's happening here? Um, Yeah, what's happening here is a clear demonstration of the noetic effect of the fall, Genesis 2. Paul elaborates in Romans chapter 3, Jeremiah tells us that everybody's heart is deceitful and wicked. What's going on here? Sin. Are you confident that these thieves will be brought to justice? Uh, Four words, great white throne judgment.
Hey, I'm John, host of Road Trip to Truth. Join us as we hit the road. I think the Bible's irrelevant. Take your own perception and make what you want of the Bible. Who's to say that my God is false and yours isn't? The New Testament is the best attested to document from the ancient world. I honestly don't think you should wait till marriage. Sex came from God. It's a gift that God has given a married couple to enjoy. It's an interesting point. You got me thinking more than in class. Well, you just got out of a critical thinking class. So. <laughs> 